Hi there, I'm your host, Eddie, and you're listening to The Motion, a podcast about examining entertainment law and copyright from an audience's perspective. In this podcast, we'll be covering copyright infringement, music history, intellectual property cases, as well as current legal news and issues in the entertainment industry. I find it's interesting to break down and get into the details of cases and question our current copyright system because it seems like it's not really working for musicians and artists anyway. I started this podcast because I've always been so intrigued by entertainment law. In the music and entertainment industry, the outcomes of trials and settlements can affect the laws and standards that are already in place. And that could change the future of music and film for audiences and artists alike. On this show, we'll be covering historical copyright cases, following current cases and their outcomes to show you how the copyright system is broken. We'll also get into definitions of legal terms, delving into details of record deals, and examining streaming services like Spotify. I want this podcast to be a place to learn about these cases and subjects from an audience and creator's point of view. I want to take a deep dive into entertainment law. As much as I can, I'm not an attorney, but I'll do my best and uncover the details of these cases and laws in this industry and how they affect us. Let's go behind the scenes a bit and see if we can make sense of it all. Let me tell you a story about copyright. John Lennon once said, music is everybody's business. It's only the publishers who think people own it. That quote couldn't be more fitting for his friend and former bandmate, George Harrison. The case I'm about to cover on today's episode is a classic music copyright case, a landmark case. I'm sure most of you have heard of it, and if not, let me tell you about the copyright infringement case of the Chiffon's He's So Fine versus George Harrison's My Sweet Lord. This was a case I remember many of my entertainment law classes covering, and for good reason. When George Harrison lost this case, it made music history. The Chiffons were a classic 60s girl group from the Bronx, with songs you may recognize like One Fine Day and Sweet Talking Guy. Their first single, He's So Fine, was released on Lori Records in 1962, and it hit number one on the U.S. Billboard charts, remaining there for over a month. The song is a gorgeous pop tune, with super catchy, harmonizing background vocals. He's So Fine was written and produced by songwriter Ronnie Mack and Bright Tunes Music Corporation was the publisher. Ronnie Mack unfortunately passed away shortly after the single was released, and Bright Tunes retained the rights to the song. George Harrison, an English songwriter, is most known for being the Beatles' lead guitarist. The Beatles were an English rock band from Liverpool that started in 1960, and are regarded as one of the most influential bands in history. After the Beatles broke up, He was the first band member to have a solo number one on the Billboard charts. That number one single was My Sweet Lord, a track from his 1970 album All Things Must Pass. My Sweet Lord was a folk gospel song that Harrison wrote about gaining a closer relationship with God, regardless of religion. In February of 1971, just months after My Sweet Lord was released, Bright Tunes, the publisher of He's So Fine, filed a lawsuit against Harrison for copyright infringement. Upon hearing My Sweet Lord, Bright Tunes was convinced that Harrison plagiarized the song. They thought that the verses of the song sounded extremely similar, and if you listen to the two tracks, you can definitely hear a similar melody and chord progression. Even though the lawsuit was filed in 1971, the case didn't go to trial until years later. During that time, the Chiffons released a cover of My Sweet Lord to bring attention to the upcoming trial, as well as the similarities between the two songs. During the trial in 1976, Bright Tunes brought up the similarity of the two songs' lyrics, comparing the Chiffons' I Don't Know How I'm Gonna Do It with Harrison's I Really Want to See You as evidence that Harrison did copy the song. They even pointed out that both song titles have three syllables in them. At trial, Harrison admitted that he was familiar with He's So Fine, although when writing My Sweet Lord during a December 1969 European tour, he claimed he based the melody of the song on the public domain hymn, Oh Happy Day. Before recording it himself, Harrison first offered the song My Sweet Lord to Billy Preston, who recorded it for his album Encouraging Words. 
Judge Richard Owen of the United States District Court listened and analyzed both songs, also hearing testimony by Harrison and expert witnesses from both sides. The judge ruled that it is perfectly obvious to the listener that in musical terms, the two songs are virtually identical. On August 31, 1976, Judge Owen found Harrison guilty of copyright infringement, explaining that Harrison had subconsciously plagiarized the chiffon song. The judge elaborated on his meaning of subconscious plagiarism. Did Harrison deliberately use the music of He's So Fine? I do not believe he did so deliberately, he said. Nevertheless, it is clear that My Sweet Lord is the very same song as He's So Fine, with different words, and Harrison had access to He's So Fine. So this is, under law, infringement of copyright and is no less so even though subconsciously accomplished. Subconscious plagiarism aside, it gets even more interesting. The penalty phase of the trial was delayed until 1981, and throughout those years things get really weird. Let's get into it. Another character involved in this lawsuit was former Beatles manager Alan Klein. Klein was an accountant, music publisher, and record label executive. He notoriously renegotiated the Rolling Stones record contract with Decca in 1965, getting them $1.25 million in advance royalties. The Rolling Stones record deal made him stand out and get noticed by many artists, including the Beatles. He also helped Bobby Darin, Sam Cooke, and other artists at that time get their maximum amount of royalties. In somewhat nefarious ways, he often made deals that benefited himself just as much as the artists he managed, skimming a portion of their money. After the Beatles' manager, Brian Epstein, died suddenly of a drug overdose in 1967, the Beatles were in need of a new manager to help get their finances in order. Initially, Paul McCartney wanted to hire his girlfriend Linda's father and brother Lee and John Eastman, who were both attorneys, as managers. Yet Alan Klein's name kept coming up, and although some of them were wary of Alan Klein's famously hostile tactics, they ended up hiring Klein to manage the band. Paul didn't want anything to do with Klein, and this was a big source of friction between him and the rest of the Beatles at that time. After the Beatles went solo in the early 70s, Harrison continued to work with Klein, although he was somewhat unhappy with Klein's work on his famous concert for Bangladesh. Klein still supported Harrison through the early stages of the lawsuit and even advised Harrison to offer to buy Bright Tunes rights to He's So Fine as part of the settlement negotiations. After the Beatles split, Paul McCartney and the other Beatles decided not to renew Alan Klein's contract as manager. Klein immediately sued the Beatles for $19 million. While he was going through that lawsuit, Harrison's trial was progressing, and Klein retaliated by outbidding Harrison and buying the rights to the song from Bright Tunes for $587,000. This made Klein the new plaintiff in the lawsuit, meaning that now Harrison would have to pay him damages. He knew, as Harrison's opponent in the case, that this would be a great way to get money from Harrison especially because the judge initially assessed the damages to be upwards of $2 million. Judge Owen later ruled it was unfair for Klein to switch sides during an ongoing trial, and he should not profit from the judgment against Harrison or by purchasing the song rights. Klein was ordered to hold he's so fine in a trust for Harrison, provided that Harrison reimburse him. Apparently, litigation and appeals over damages continued until March 1998 making it another long legal battle that stands out in music history. George Harrison eventually paid $587,000 in total for subconsciously plagiarizing He's So Fine. In his autobiography, Harrison reflected on the lawsuit, saying, I wasn't consciously aware of the similarity to He's So Fine. When I wrote the song, it was more improvised and not fixed. Although, when my version of the song came out, and started to get a lot of airplay, people started talking about it. And it was then I thought, why didn't I realize? It would have been very easy to change a note here or there and not affect the feeling of the record. He continued, I don't feel guilty or bad about it. In fact, it saved many a heroin addict's life. I know the motive behind writing the song in the first place, and its effect far exceeded the legal hassle. 
George Harrison apparently didn't write music for a very long time after the decades-long lawsuit. It seemed to really affect his drive to create, and I completely understand why. In regards to the case, former bandmate Ringo Starr told Melody Maker magazine, George was very unlucky. There's no doubt that the tune is similar, but how many songs have been written with other melodies in mind? George's version is much heavier than the chiffon's. He might have done it with the original in the back of his mind, but he's just very unlucky that someone wanted to make it a test case in court. This case had a massive impact on the music industry and introduced the concept of subconscious plagiarism. Pop culture and music history were forever changed by this. The judge's ruling set a precedent for more stringent copyright standards and also served as encouragement for people to file copyright infringement lawsuits afterwards. Artists still have to be careful of the music they write and publish, making sure it doesn't infringe on an existing song's rights. Unfortunately, there's so much music out there and one can't listen to it all or remember everything they've heard. Until there's a better system for handling infringement cases, artists must be aware of what they're creating. Listen and compare the two songs in question. How similar do they sound to you? Links to both songs are down below in the episode notes. The Motion is written, produced, and recorded by me, Eddie. Music by Machinima Sound. Follow us for updates on Twitter at The Motion Pod and on Instagram at Listen to the Motion. If you enjoy the show, please subscribe to this podcast and give us a five star review. Thank you so much to the people who have rated and reviewed us already. I really appreciate it. Also, if you have any questions, topics, or cases you think we should cover on future episodes, please send us an email at themotionpod at gmail.com. Right now, I'm listening to Soccer Mommy's album, Color Theory. What are y'all listening to at the moment? Let us know at The Motion Pod on Twitter and at Listen to the Motion on Instagram. See you next Friday for another new episode of The Motion. Bedroom Beethoven's is a podcast where I, your host Cello, sits down with music producers to discuss how they create the music you love and what they personally sacrificed to make it happen. We're talking deep dive, heavily researched discussions that have guests every episode saying, You've went above and beyond pretty much most interviews I've ever done. So join the cultural movement at bedroombeethovens.com or wherever you get podcasts.